The Buick Motor Company has been trying to change its public image for quite some time now, and that's not apparent in their sort of quirky ads where they poke fun at some of their prior vehicles and designs. It's very apparent in this 2020 Buick Enclave Avenir trim level. Yes, folks, this is not just any Buick Enclave. This is the top of the line Avenir, and we're going to be taking a look at it here today on Gas Guzzler Reviews. So let's get into it. But first, a big thanks to all the folks at Kuhn Chevy Buick GMC of Clarksville, especially Eric for helping us get a look at this vehicle here. Also, a quick note, I know we've been putting out a lot of GM vehicles recently. They just are the ones that are most convenient for us to get out when we're on these breaks in college. We're going to be working hard to film a lot of videos while we're on our winter break in college and putting out videos like this uh, sort of intermittently while we are on breaks. Thank you so much for sticking with us, guys. We promise that we will be putting out videos whenever we can. So let's get into this one. The Buick Enclave was introduced to the world in 2007, and it received its second generation redesign for the 2018 model year. Now it's a large luxury SUV, and it competes with the likes of the Volvo XC90, the Infiniti QX60, and the Acura MDX. This is a huge big place to be competing. I mean, first of all, the SUVs are huge, but then the features they offer and the competition is just massive here. So you need to bring something really impressive to the table to make it. And this vehicle has a really impressive value proposition. Coming in at around $56,000, the Buick Enclave Avenir has almost every feature standard. And then this one has one extra technology package on it, which still leaves it at an MSRP of under $60,000. And I think when we take a look at this today, you're going to see that that is a pretty good value for what you get, especially considering some vehicles like that XC90 I mentioned can get close to the $90,000 range if you option it up right. So let's take a look at this vehicle and see just what sort of value it has to offer. Now I want to jump back and talk about that value proposition I mentioned. The Buick Enclave Avenir has a standard price of $56,100 right here. And that comes with a whole list of standard features. Like I mentioned, almost all of them, ranging from massaging seats to lane keep assist and an advanced camera system that surrounds the entire vehicle. All of that is standard for under $60,000. Now this vehicle does have the Avenir technology package, which includes adaptive cruise control, enhanced automatic braking along with premium suspension and that comes around to $2,095. So still under $60,000 MSRP, you're getting everything that I'm going to show you in this vehicle, which is pretty impressive compared to some of the competitors. The front of the Enclave Avenir is definitely a good looking vehicle and it's following a lot of the Buick corporate design trends. So if we look at the top right here, you have these nice body lines. They're not really strong, but they're definitely distinct. They're sort of lightly rounded and they give the hood a nice effect in the sun. It's better than just any normal flat hood that you would traditionally get. And you have a few of them. It creates a nice look. Moving down from there, you have your headlights. Your headlights have this nice sort of silvery overhang over them. I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, but it's a nice silver overhang. You have your Buick badge right there, along with the reflector back here. Now under that, you have this nice piece of metal. It looks kind of like a boomerang. It goes this way and then boomerangs back and that encloses your headlight right there. I think that's a really interesting look what they've done inside of the headlight enclosure here and I myself really like it. Now it, but right below that separating it from the bodywork is this piece of chrome. This chrome piece surrounds the grill and then I think that's a really interesting look. I like how it starts here and it goes all the way to the other side of the vehicle and sort of opens up and holds in the grill. I just think it's a nice looking chrome piece and it has some interesting lines to it especially right here. Now talking about your grill itself it's this neat almost diamond pyramid uh, shape. A lot of these small pyramids and they all are made of sort of this dark smoky chrome. I think it's a really nice look. It, it seems just a tad darker than the chrome it surrounds it. Uh, that surrounds it at least from my angle right here and I particularly really do enjoy it. In, in, in there you have your Buick badge, uh, red, white, and blue, which is very nice and that has these chrome wings coming off it that don't just quite touch this piece of chrome right here, this piece. I think that is a really neat look and I think it is a very classy design having those large wings come off of it. Now moving down from there you have some fog lights down here, you have this piece of metal that um, this metal chrome that also has a light in it. I think that's a very good look. Overall, it's a very good looking front fascia. I think that they did a good job with it. It's classy. Nothing here is outrageous. It's exactly what you want in a Buick. 
So here we are at the side of the Enclave Avenir, and I think that overall this is a good looking vehicle. I like how your lights right here sort of wrap around pretty well onto the side of the vehicle. I like when automakers sort of merge the sides of their vehicles like that. You also have a nice body line that starts here and swoops down under the headlights in the front. Now, as we look around here, first I'm gonna start by talking about your rims. You have these 20 inch aluminum rims, and while they aren't my personal style, I actually think they do look nice, especially for this vehicle. Um, I, I just think that sort of how you have these angles mixed with the curves, it's a really nice mix of angles and curves, which is something that you don't see too much of these days. A lot of times you see one or the other in the automotive industry right now. Now, you do have a lot of nice chrome accents along the side of this vehicle. Now, I know my co-host Cole does not like all this chrome um, on sides of vehicles, but I personally do, especially on this one. You have a nice chrome accent right here. You have one down here, and you have Avenir written in this nice script in chrome, um, adding some extra class to the vehicle. You also have this nice chrome strip running around the vehicle, around the windows. You have chrome right here on your door handles, and I think it all looks very nice. You also have this brilliant garnet red metallic color. I just think this is a really incredible color. It's like a wine red almost. I really, really like it. I think it looks really good with all the chrome, especially like up here, and you just have this nice body line right here running under the windows. I think it's a very good looking vehicle from the side. Now, the one part I do not like from the side is right here. If you all watched some of our previous videos of windows with floating roof or of vehicles with floating roof line windows, you know how I feel about them. I think they look cheap, I don't like them, and I don't think automakers are fooling anyone thinking the roof is floating. This is a cheap piece of plastic. I do not like it. I wish they just connected this right here because now the chrome doesn't line up and I just personally do not like this look. You might, and that's perfectly okay because this is a personal taste sort of thing, but I do not like this. I think it looks cheap. Now it is not as egregious as some other automakers like Toyota with the RAV4 where they didn't even bother to put a shiny piece of plastic here. Literally just a matte piece of plastic piece of plastic. But I'm not going to rant about that anymore. It's going to just frustrate me. So we're going to move around to the back of the vehicle. Overall, a good looking side, especially with this color. I mean, I just can't get over it. So it is official, everyone. My lapel mic has died. However, this microphone is still working, the recorder itself. So we're going to either use this or the camera audio. Apologies for this. We're going to have it fixed by the next video. So sorry for the bad audio, but let's continue. So this back area right here is actually my favorite angle of the Enclave. I just think it is a very good looking vehicle back here. I really like this strong chrome bar that runs across the back and how it plays with the taillights right here. Within your taillights, you have two strong distinct lines you have one that comes and curves like this and you have another that's u-shaped like this i just think that is a very good look i like how the taillights look and i just like how this chrome bar just juts into them and separates them i think it's very good looking you also have another chrome bar right down here and you just have a lot of strong body lines down here like this one right here you got one running vertically right here and then you have like body line after body line i think it's a very good look and you also just have some nice curviness brought in by the window right here. I think that it is a very good looking rear end. Now, um, this does have a power tailgate that you can open with your foot. You just wanna kick a little bit to the right of this exhaust pipe right here. The exhaust actually are part real, so they are a real tube that comes out and feeds into those um, decorative pieces right there. So it is not the completely fake ones that we've seen in some other vehicles, as you see there opens up quite nicely there is actually a puddle light that will show at night a buick puddle light that will show you where to kick so that is very cool now once you get back here you do have a best in class 23.6 cubic feet of cargo seat with the third row up put all the seats down you have about 97.6 cubic feet of cargo space that is a lot of room now you do have power seats back here so to put those down all you're going to do is press this button right here your headrest will go down if you hold it the seat will go down now, a lot of automakers in their luxury SUVs have power folding seats, but they won't come up if you push the button. In the Buick, they will come right back up if you just hold that button, pull your headrest up, and you're good to go. So overall, this is a very functional rear area, lots of room, and a good looking uh, back as well. Very cool. Now here in the engine compartment, you have your 3.6 liter six cylinder engine putting out 310 horsepower and 266 pound feet of torque. That's made to a nine speed transmission that's gonna send power to all four wheels. And you can expect about 17 city, 25 highway, and 20 MPG combined on this all wheel drive model. 
So entering your avenir, you do have a proximity key you can use. So right here, this is your key. Let me get into focus for you. Uh, it does have a little more rough black plastic than I would like, but you can see you do have your button for your remote start, your lock, unlock, and your power tailgate. So entering using the proximity key, we're just gonna approach the vehicle. There's a button right here in Chrome on the door handle. You press that, vehicle unlocks. And when you open the door, you can feel there's a lot of weight in here. They definitely purposefully put some weight in here. Pull that open, it feels really good really luxurious, really premium, and you can step in nice and easily. And you do have a nice Avenir door sill right here. It's not light up or anything, but it's a nice metal door sill. So overall, very nice entry experience. So here we are in the front of the Enclave Avenir, and it is a very nice place to be. This is where this vehicle really shines. So first of all, you just have nice leather everywhere. So this has a nice chestnut interior, which is only available on the Avenir trim. You have this nice brown leather that runs around your infotainment and around your air vents. Then you have some nice sort of fake wood grain right here that runs under that. And then under that, you have this gray leather and then it molds really nicely, this gray leather. It comes and into your center console area right here. And then you also have continuation of that chestnut leather right here. And it runs in this nice long strip all the way down the center. It's a very nice look. There's soft touch everywhere up here. And now along your doors, this is all soft touch and padded. There's a little bit of black plastic right here that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, just making this a bit of a nicer material would have made a big difference, but you still get a lot of very nice materials in here. You have more of that wood grain down here, and then you have metal. You have this metal line, this big metal line that runs all the way around in front of your passenger. You have the metal that sort of separates your infotainment from your leather right here in the center and you also have more metal here in your center area. Overall, the materials here do feel very premium, especially keeping in mind that this vehicle costs under $60,000, and you have this very nice interior with two tons of leather, metal, and wood. Overall, very premium experience, especially at this price. So here we are taking a look at the driver's area here in the Enclave. And as you can see, you have a very large digital display that is flanked by two physical gauges. Now these gauges actually aren't entirely physical. You can see they cut into the screen and I really like that look quite a bit. So you can see that actually those two gauges right there for what appear to be your oil temperature and your battery life are not actually physical. Those just appear to be physical even though they are encased in the ring that makes up those two outer gauges. Now this whole area can be controlled right here on your steering wheel. Right now we're in the info screen, so you can scroll through and get all sorts of neat information by clicking the up and down arrows here. Now if you wanna change what's being shown here, if you don't wanna see info about your car anymore, you can hit the side arrow and that will bring up a little sub menu and for example, we could have our navigation right there. So that is something very neato. Now I'm gonna put it back to info. And in this screen, you can also adjust a lot of your driver safety features like your collision warning and your adaptive cruise control. You can see we have a button for our heated seat right there. So there's a lot of neat options that you can do with the center screen. It's very clear, it's very crisp, and it's very quick. I like it a lot. Now let's take a look at your actual steering wheel itself. You do have some hard plastic right here, but everywhere you're touching is leather. It's a good width for this sort of vehicle. Um, and you do have this nice little wood piece right up here, which definitely is a nice little uh, taste of older Buicks, and I definitely like having that wood at the top there. So overall, very nice driver's area. You can see we're still surrounded by those premium materials like this chestnut leather, this fake wood grain, and this nice little weird metal chrome strip. Um, overall, very nice driver's area. The seats in the Enclave are very nice. They are heated and cooled, and you can see down here we have power adjusting for both the passenger and the driver. Now both the passenger and the driver also get this little button which turns on your massage. So let's show you your center area here. We're gonna start up top. First of all, I don't like this top sunglass holder area. This looks like it came out of a base level Chevy, but that's not that big of a deal. You do have your screen right here. So this is actually a screen. This is now a rear view mirror. As you can see, you can't see me holding the camera. You just see a live feed of what's in the back of this vehicle. Now, so there's a camera in the back which is recording everything and displaying you on this screen. And the benefit of this over a traditional mirror is that you can have stuff stacked all the way up, blocking your rear view mirror or uh, blocking your rear window. 
uh, sorry, and the view won't be blocked. You can still see what's behind you. So this is a very cool feature. To make it a normal meal, mirror, all you do is flip that and you can see me. So now if we move down from that, you have your infotainment system, which is wrapped in this metal, which is wrapped in leather. So that's very nice. Now, if you've watched any of our other GM videos, you know that we really like this infotainment system. Um, there's nothing too, too spectacular about it other than it's super fast. It doesn't have any weird features uh, like the BMW one in particular. It does have CarPlay, Android Auto. These cars do have the Wi-Fi hotspots if you wanna pay for those. Um, I, this card does have a Bose sound system. I can't play it for you because of YouTube copyright rules, but I can tell you it does sound very cool. Uh, probably the best app on here is the camera app, and it some of the camera views don't work so well like this one, but others are very helpful. You can get all different views around your vehicle, so that is very useful. Like this one's very useful if you want to make sure you don't hit a curb. To get back home, all you're going to do is hit the physical home button right down here. Flanking your infotainment screen, you do have buttons to control a lot of your vehicle systems, your traction control, your four-wheel drive. Um, you also then have your parking sensors, your lane keep. Overall, that is a very functional system. Buttons you're going to be pressing a lot are very clearly displayed. Right below that, you have some buttons just for controlling your infotainment screen, and then you have physical climate controls below that. Now, this doesn't have the cool dials that GM puts in some of their vehicles, where as you turn the dial, uh, the temperature is displayed inside the dial. Um, but it does have those nice blue and red lights on it. You do have your controls for your heated and cool seats. So you can see as I just hit there, the heated cooled seats will turn on. It is very hot today in this car. And then moving down from there, you have your shifter. We do have one of those weird shifters. So you can see if I put my foot on the brake, you just push this button on the side and then I can pop into drive like that, reverse like that, or just push this button to go into park. Now on the side right here, you can see that we have two cup holders, which is currently holding our microphone. And then you also have this nice wood, which is surrounded by this nice metal, which surrounds your shifter, which I forgot to mention does have some nice materials on it. You then have this nice leather armrest with the stitching that goes around it, very nice. Open that up and you will find a small mouse storage space. It's nothing spectacular but it's certainly usable. Overall, this whole area is very practical. It's pretty nice looking and I certainly like it. And it is here, folks, that my camera decided to overheat and shut off. Now, the rest of the clips are still good, but this one didn't quite finish. So just my thoughts about the back of the vehicle. You did have seat heaters back there, which were very nice. The seats were pretty comfortable. And in this clip, I'm sitting behind where I would sit as a driver. So you have plenty of room for um, an adult behind another adult. Um, there's plenty of leg room. You can see I had lots of extra. The nice materials continue back there. You have more of that nice chestnut leather and some of that more metal and wood. And you also have plenty of connectivity. You have uh, two USB ports along with a household outlet, which is very nice. So overall, it's a good place to be for your rear passengers. They do have a sunroof above them, which I will mention later in the video. Now the back seats don't get as much space and really I can't fit back here behind myself in the driver, behind myself in this seat and then I cannot fit myself in the third seat. So in other words, if there were three of me, we could not sit all behind each other. I could sit one behind me, but I could not sit all three comfortably. So you could definitely fit children back here um, and adults can squeeze back here. Don't get me wrong. You can fit uh, three adults back here. Uh, it's more of a squeeze, not a fit. You're not gonna wanna go for a long distance, but for a trip across town, it will work. Um, so I don't think it's unfair or unjust for Buick to call this vehicle a seven seater. I just would not sit three adults back here for a very long trip. Overall, you still do have some nice amenities back here. They don't forget about the rear passengers. You do have cup holders, you do have power outlets. And one thing I forgot to mention is the dual sunroofs. This vehicle has a sunroof in the front and a sunroof in the back. So that is very cool to see. Overall, again, the rear space, if you have kids, they're gonna love this. If you have an adult friend, they'll be okay with the short trip, nothing more. So this vehicle is a very good one. That's under $60,000, you're getting a lot here. You're getting a lot of active safety features. You're getting a good engine. 310 horsepower isn't bad. And you're getting a lot of amenities in there like those massaging seats. It's a very good value. It's a very impressive vehicle in this segment at this price. Now, my overall verdict is that if you are considering a large SUV, but you're a, a bit budget conscious and you don't want to go blow $90,000 on a Volvo, this should definitely be a competitor for you. 
So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. We're going to continue to put out videos as often as we can. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome week, guys. We look forward to seeing you all in the next video.